Today we're making one of these long wallet things. Hey, what's up? Good morning, good afternoon. Good to see you. I designed this wallet for my wife for Christmas and then I posted it to Instagram and it really got a positive response. So let's just take a closer look and then we'll jump into making this thing. All right, so to make this thing, you will need a little bit more hardware than just the usual leather and thread, but I promise you it's not too crazy. You're just going to need some rivets and also some snaps. And you could just leap the hardware out altogether if you really want. On this side, you could just stitch where it's riveted. And then instead of a snap here, you could do something like this where it wraps all the way around but then I really don't know what you would do inside with this pocket. I'm not too sure, but you guys can figure it out if, uh, if that's the way you wanted to go. Anyway, this wallet has four card slots. It has a coin pouch, and then it has two hidden pockets where you can put receipts and accumulate all kinds of garbage in here that you will eventually just throw out. The whole thing is held together by this strap, which is riveted on one side, and it has a snap here. My wife loves hers, and whoever you make it for is gonna love it too. So now let's just jump right into making this thing. Start by heading over to my website, linked in the description, where I have a page detailing what you need and the download link. Print out the pattern and make sure it is 100% scale. That's really important. Take that pattern and roughly cut out the pieces. Now we'll tape the pieces down to your leather and cut them out. You can also punch the holes for the hardware here or opt to do it the hard way like I did and punch them later on. Once your leather is all cut out, start by beveling, sanding and burnishing the pocket tops as well as the top of the coin pouch flap. I like to go through a few grits of sandpaper here. I start around 320 and then I work my way up to 800. You can use a burnishing machine if you have one, but a wood slicker works just fine too. I have a pretty affordable burnishing machine that I got off Amazon and I'm going to use it throughout this video. I did a video on my burnishing machine a while back. I will drop links to the machine itself and to my video uh, at the end of the video or down in the description just for anyone who's interested. After burnishing with the machine and my token old pen, I sand it back down with the 800 grit sandpaper and then I hit it with just a bit more token old, and then do a final burnish using a canvas cloth. Once the pocket tops are burnished, I skive down my T-slot using my French skiver, French edger, whatever it's called. You might not have to do this if you went with thinner leather, but I went with some big, thick, beefy leather, so I gotta cut down on some of that bulk. With it all skived down, we can start assembling. Let's start by attaching the T-slot to the pocket body. My T-slots usually sit about three quarters of an inch up off the bottom, 
but I still test it with my next pocket to make sure I don't end up with a nasty case of slot gap. Once it's in place, mark it with your awl, rough up the leather a bit, and we're ready to glue the tabs and bottom. Give it a few minutes for the glue to set and then punch some holes on the bottom and stitch it up. I'd recommend hammering down these stitches just to stop them from showing through on the next layer. Next we're going to attach the next pocket. Again, rough up the leather and glue it on. Measure halfway on the card slots. Should be four and a half inches. Then draw a straight line down, and this is going to be your stitching line that separates the two rows of card slots. Punch the stitching line with your punch. Just make sure you don't go so low that you cut the stitching line on the T-slot underneath. Once that's glued, we can assemble the coin slot. Here you'll need to attach the snaps before gluing it together. If you have a press like this, it'll make life easier, but you can do it with a mallet and their normal setters. Just make sure you test the snaps a few times once it's done. You don't want them coming off after it's all put together. Now glue those pieces together. So here's where my method is a little bit less traditional. I like to use these big old Cinebrooks stitching punches. The teeth on them are all tapered, so if you go through a really thick piece of leather like what I'm using for this, you end up with a really big hole on the top and then a really small exit hole and it looks inconsistent and it can affect how your stitches look. So I developed this strategy here. This method is for people using similar big punches like this and thick leather. It will give you a really nice consistent stitch on both sides, but it will not work if you're using a slanted or a diamond chisel unless you have a reverse slanted version of it. If you don't have a punch like these, skip this step and attach it and punch holes like you normally would. With all that said, if you're going to use this method, mark your stitching line and punch your holes in the card and coin pockets right now. How I make sure the holes line up is I make a stitching line on the wallet body, then I flip it over and I set the pockets where they're supposed to go. Now I take my awl and I press it all the way through the hole. This will make a mark on the other side of the leather and tell me where my holes should be on that one. I typically just do this at the start, the end, and the corners. You don't need to do this on every hole since there's consistent spacing in your uh, punch.
Once you've marked all the holes, you're going to punch through using your stitching punch and the stitching holes should line up exactly. Do this for both pockets. And now you're going to need to attach your hardware here if you're using it. If you haven't already, quickly bevel, sand, and burnish the strap piece just the same as you did the pocket tops. Now attach the snap to one end. Next, attach the other piece of that snap to the main wallet body. And finally, we'll be riveting the strap to the wallet body. Just make sure that these are all secure before you proceed with putting the wallet together. Now we're gonna glue the pockets to the wallet body, then stitch them up. Use a pretty thin layer of glue. If you use too much, it can seep through those holes that you've already punched. And if you didn't use my method, this is where you'd glue it together and then punch the holes the way you normally would. You're just gonna need to remember to somehow get that strap out of the way. When you're starting and finishing your saddle stitch, really make sure that you're sitting that back stitch right where you want it. It can look sloppy if you let it do whatever it wants. Once both pockets are attached to the wallet, it's time to bevel sand and burnish. Really make sure you sand it down level before you start going through the grits. I also find sanding a few coarser grits before beveling the edges helps to make a nicer edge here. It kind of makes it mushroom out and gives the beveler just something to sink its teeth into. And now start sanding your way down through your grits. I went all the way to a thousand here and once you're happy with it, it's time to burnish. For these outer edges, I always go a little bit extra. Here I'm gonna use my tokenal marker and the machine and burnish each edge twice. Afterward, I resand every edge with the thousand grit and then I burnish twice more using the canvas cloth. And finally, hit it with your favorite leather bomb and admire your work. This wallet is really fun to make and looks great. The hardware does add a few more steps, but honestly, it's not that much work. And I have a feeling someone who hasn't seen my video on it is gonna ask, so this is a grog marker. These things come empty. What you do is you fill it with a 50-50 mix of water and tokenol, and then it's a squeeze marker. So this is a felt tip on the end. You would just squeeze some out here and put it on your edges and this will change the leatherworking game. This will change your life. This is amazing. This makes burnishing edges way less of a pain in the ass. I did a video on these things up here. I'll also link it in the description and then I'll uh, do a link where you can pick one of these up. They're awesome, buy it. I think it's five bucks. Go get one today. Go get one. Get one. And I hope you enjoyed this video and the free template. If you did like it, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. These templates and videos are a ton of effort to put out and watching this community grow is the only real reason that I'm able to do it for free. And I'll see you guys in the next video.